So another question is, is how do I know whether or not they're termites or ants? Termites are not difficult to identify. They're just easy to confuse with ants. Uh, they're very similar in shape and size, especially when during the beginning of the spring and summer, uh, it's very common to see termite and ant swarmers. They typically come in after big rains. You'll see them uh, flying about your structures in the yard. They do look very similar. They're going to be dark in color typically. So part of the identification process for termites versus ants, something that our specialists do look for is the antenna where the termite swarmers have a straight antenna. Ants will have a curved antenna or it had an elbowed antenna. So much like this and the termites will look more like this. So that's one thing that we're going to look for the wing size as well as the spacing. So where termite swarmers, they have, four wings of equal length. Ants will have four wings too long, too short. So those unequal sizes are a key factor in identifying whether or not they're ants versus termites, as well as ants have a very pinched waist. They have three distinct portions, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. With termites, they just look long and skinny. They have a very broad waist. So they do not have three distinct parts. They have two distinct parts. It's easy to show that they have a head and then just what looks to be a long body. So we look for those three things when identifying termites. And then it comes down to the type of termite. So is it a dry wood, Formosan, or subterranean? So once again, those are the key factors in diagnosing or determining whether or not one, is it an ant versus a termite? And then we get into what kind of termite is it and the best treatment method. Now, on the other hand, with ants, if it is an ant infestation, in the greater Houston and San Antonio areas, we have a very, very wide variety of ants. So once we've determined one, is it an ant or is it a termite? If we need to treat for ants, we need to determine the species of ants uh, and that'll determine the treatment method. So there are certain chemicals that you might use for one ant, but it's a big no-no to use on another ant. Uh, can cause or compound the issue, could cause a bigger issue than what you previously had. Some ants uh, defense mechanism is to, if they sense danger, so in this case, if you're misapplying a chemical or using the wrong chemical, their defense mechanism is to break apart into multiple colonies. And the last thing you need is to have multiple colonies in your house where you previously had one. So it's very important to one, know what the ant species is and two, the proper chemical to apply. Um, it's in this age of do-it-yourself pest control, it's very easy for anyone to get online, take a look at uh, the latest blog and or get advice from somebody where it may have worked for them, but there are hundreds and hundreds of chemicals out there. There are hundreds of ant species out there and it's very easy to go to the super mega store, the, the big chains and you just get what was on the shelf. While it could be labeled for that type of ant that you have, do you know for a fact that it's the type of ant that's on that label? So do-it-yourself pest control is a slippery slope. Um, you're gonna wanna determine, is it a fire ant? Uh, are they mounding? So native versus red imported fire ants. They have very distinct type of mounds. One that everyone's very familiar with is the large, large fire ant mounds, the large fire ant mounds. Whereas native fire ants, they do not create those large mounds. So you wanna be careful when determining what you're treating for and how treating. It's best to determine the type of ant being treated, uh, just be certain. So make sure that you're looking up the correct uh, terminology. So red imported fire ant, native fire ant, uh, so the treatment methods for say tawny ants versus red imported fire ants or just regular fire ants is going to be very different uh, as well as treatment methods and location of the nest or colony for carpenter ants. Carpenter ants nest up high where it's very dry. They don't like excessively moist areas. Carpenter ants do not actually eat the wood. They destroy the wood and the process of making or building the area for their colony or nest. Whereas say termites, they actually do destroy the wood or the structure by ingesting it, by eating it. 